Hey there, my friend. Happy New Year and welcome to the year where I know that you're going to be hitting those big goals that you set for yourself. The year when we really just say goodbye to that baggage that was holding us down, where we say thank you for all that we learned in 2022 and start to say hello to implementing some new and improved aspects of our business. If you haven't taken a moment to reflect back on where you've come from since the start of last year, or even taken a look at your progress over the last few years, do yourself a favor. Just do so, okay? It's easy to just keep trekking along, jumping on those new ideas, implementing those new strategies just to keep growing our businesses. But it's also super, super inspiring to see that growth, to see where we've come from. Plus, how do you really set goals for yourself and your business if you haven't set those baseline numbers in the stats with where you're currently sitting? Now, I'm usually pretty ahead of the game when I'm planning out my year, which I'll get into in another episode for you, but I feel I'm also always super inspired come the new year. Yes, you got it. I set those very typical New Year's resolutions for my business just as I do with my personal life. So if you are in the same boat as me and you're going through setting some big goals and putting together your plan for your year, what I want to do right now is walk you through what I'm seeing and what I'm envisioning happening this year in the online space, okay? Which really is more of just like an insight into what I'm focusing on for my business too. So I've broken it down into five different trends for you to follow just to make it super easy. I'm going to get right to the point with this one because I know we are all super eager to get moving. So whether you are just starting out or if you've been in business for a while, just know these tips, they're going to help you stay ahead of your competition and really just keep ahead of the curve. That's my goal for you. So first up, let's talk about technology, okay? You know how much I love automation. It's the key to really scaling your business without having a massive team behind you or building that huge corporation. It's also how you can get a heck of a lot more done in a shorter period of time and how you can find balance between building that business that you love, but also just living your best life. That's one area where you'll want to put your focus with your business this year. You want to start using, really just start using that automation to its fullest. Now, when I'm talking about automation, I'm not talking about eliminating that personal touch and just becoming a robot within your business. Although I'm sure we aren't far behind robots doing everything for us in our lives, but there's still a huge, huge, huge importance behind building that relationship, okay? So with the automation that I'm talking about, it's really just automating tedious tasks that you do over and over and over again in your business that you don't necessarily need to put that time or energy into anymore. So when you learn how to automate certain aspects within your business and you start to use it to your advantage, you can truly focus on other aspects of your business that actually need your time and attention to hit those goals. So my biggest tip for adding automation to your business is to start paying attention to the systems, the processes that you already have set up within your business. And then look at what you can change or look at what you can automate. What's something that you do over and over again? Now, usually when I start talking about automation with business owners and entrepreneurs, they're concerned with that personal aspect, which I get. But like I said, I'm not talking about losing any personality with your business. There is certain technology out there that is here to enhance our business performance and really just make life and business easier for us. So just like in our personal lives, let's actually, let's think back to when we were younger and cell phones came out, okay? So the very first phone, I think this was the first phone I ever had. You can make phone calls, you can text with T9, and you play that game Snake, right? I think that's what it called. It made my life easier to connect with my friends, my family, connect with my parents. But now I can do everything in the palm of my hands these days. Technology has made my life easy. That doesn't mean I don't do other things in my life, though. It has just allowed me to put time and energy somewhere else. So same thing with your business. Focus on using technology on the tasks that aren't serving you in your business at the level that it's at now. So to give you some ideas, some of the tedious tasks that I've automated are my client onboarding sequence, sending invoices and collecting payments, following up with all prospects, even my lead generation and marketing I automate. So there is seriously some incredible technology out there for us. And that's where a lot of people are putting their attention. Exactly what I see people doing for 2023. So keep that one in mind for yourself, okay? 
So next is looking at the overall customer experience that you're providing to your clients, but also to your prospects. People want information quickly and they want it at their tips of their fingers. People are so busy that they don't have the patience or want to wait for answers or even search for answers anymore. The key is to utilize the technology that is literally sitting right in front of us to not only provide that quick and fast service for our clients, but allow them to have some flexibility as well. So for example, okay, think about Lululemon. They now offer something called virtual shopping. Now, before COVID, virtual shopping wasn't necessarily a thing. Yes, you can shop online, you can purchase things, but now you can actually have someone else do the shopping for you while you're on camera with them. Or another incredible customer experience nowadays from a shopping online standpoint is being able to physically see what the clothing or that item that you're going to purchase would look like on yourself, just as you would do if you tried it on in store. So for example, my sister, she was purchasing glasses online and she could actually see what the glasses would look like on her face before she purchased them. Or you even see new technology out there nowadays for gyms that allows you to do a workout simply by looking at a screen, standing next to it. People want quick, they want flexible, they want reliable options. So think about how you can actually streamline some processes in your business to just adapt that level of quick but efficient service. The third one I want to point out is actually SEO. Now, I've never been an SEO expert, I won't say I am, but I know the basics and I always like to use my own brain power to perfect this one. So SEO is search engine optimization, or in simple terms, it's what people type on the internet to search for an answer. For example, If you were looking up a recipe or you're looking for a recipe to make for dinner and you know that all the people are coming for dinner, they're on the keto diet. So you would type in easy keto recipes or something along those lines, right? Well, when you include that phrase online in your content, you are more likely to show up in their results when they search for that online. We act like that on Google. We've been using Pinterest like that for literally years. And now Facebook and Instagram, they're picking up on it. People are starting to use social media to search for what they are looking for, which is making SEO on social media more impactful and more important for your business. Now, we saw in 2022 that social media started to make some shifts with how they perform on their platform from an SEO standpoint. They are putting less focus on hashtags and actually more focus on keywords. So I've talked about using specific keywords in your Instagram bio in the past, but this year, this is just going to continue to expand. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about in terms of that bio, let me just explain that one quickly. So when you put the keyword, let's just say social media manager in your bio, and someone searches the term on Instagram, your profile is more likely to pop up for them as an option for them to look at your account or consume your content. So that is definitely something that's going to be getting a lot more attention over this year, or at least I imagine that. I even catch myself searching on Instagram for ideas, for inspiration, for information just like I used to use Pinterest. So for example, when I was looking up nurseries for my baby girl, I typed in the search bar on Instagram, nursery ideas, and my entire feed showed me different pictures and different reels. So a tip with this one is not to try to get too creative with it. Just use words that people are actually searching for in your content. Think about what people are actually searching online and include that multiple times in your text. Now the next tip in trend to focus on Drum roll, please. Yes, you guessed it, video content. Now, I don't just mean any type of video content. I'm talking about that short, that really to the point content, okay? That is what I'm talking about with videos. Now, I'm sure you could have guessed that from the very beginning of listening to me. I would tell you, videos are not going anywhere, which is 100% true. So if you haven't jumped on the trend with reels, doing YouTube shorts or TikTok videos now, this is your time. I totally get it is very time consuming. It can be even awkward at times, but if you are looking to use social media, especially from an organic side of things, you want to jump on that video trend, okay? Now the best part though, people want short to the point videos. I'm talking about five to 10 second long videos. So that includes Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and even YouTube now. Have you heard of YouTube shorts? That's what it is. Now, remember, we're all busy. We like to move at lightning speed. And the likelihood that someone will actually sit there and watch a long video online, that's very slim now. 
you see people drop off really quickly when you do that. So even with podcast episodes, so you see this trend, people want quick, they want consumable, they want content, right? There are some podcasts that I used to listen to religiously. Their episodes are about 45 minutes long. Like I said, I used to listen to them all the time. They were, they're great podcasts. They still are great podcasts, but I've stopped listening to them. Not because I don't want to learn from them or not because I don't like their content anymore. I stop only because they're way too long for me. And it's hard to actually fit that full episode into my days, especially because I'm not commuting to a job anymore. Like seven years ago, eight years ago, that's when I listened to my podcast when I drove an hour and a half. So instead, now I listen to the podcasts that are 10 to 15 minute longs and I put them in the pockets of my day. People want you to get to the point. They want to get their information. They want to be entertained, but then they just want to move on. So why do you think TikTok is blowing up so much? Think about it. Think about that when you're actually creating your content. So when I ask you to create a short video or to shoot a video in general, I'm not saying get a full production company and make an hour long video. I'm saying jump on for 10 seconds, say what you got to say, and then just get off. Just make it valuable in some way, shape or form, but just get to the point. That is the entire key with those short form videos. Okay. Now the last one for you, this one is all about the conversation and where you're actually having it to connect with people. I want you to think about how you use social media right now. Are you spending more time in your inbox nowadays than scrolling? I know I am. It's actually hard to keep up with the inbox messages that I get on my social media platforms. Now, why do you think this happens? So in my opinion, it happens because people want to be seen personally. We know that social media, you are talking to everyone. Even when you are super narrowed in on that dream client and you're speaking to their pain points and whatnot and all that that I teach, you can read or watch something and you can feel that connection to it. You can feel like they're talking to you but we're not stupid as users. We know the content is being seen by hundreds or thousands, sometimes even millions of people. Social media is realizing the behavior around this and they're seeing more and more conversations actually happening within the messaging section of social media, which again, goes back to having that personal connection with your audience. I love that they're actually putting more focus here. In fact, did you see that you can now create a message group with every single Facebook group that you have? So for the spotlight theory, just for an example, I can now take everyone in that group and automatically put them into a Facebook message and talk to everyone through Messenger. Doing that, it seems a little bit more personal just posting the Facebook group, right? I don't know, that's how I feel about it. Plus, it's just, it's something that people are already using to connect with people. Now, with that being said, you'll definitely see a lot more bot technology popping up in messages, and you'll see ad campaigns that are actually directing people to their inboxes to have that conversation. So I've run many campaigns through a program called ManyChat, which is a huge one for me this year. So they can actually generate leads through messages on both Instagram and Facebook and have a conversation. And Meta is actually putting more focus on messenger options as well. Did you know that you can run ads directing to WhatsApp? It's honestly pretty cool what's available to us. I love it if you couldn't tell. At the end of the day, I will always recommend setting up systems and processes using the technology that's literally sitting in front of you. Plus, I'll always recommend focusing on building your personal brand, which is going to come in handy now with these growing trends, especially when you start automating those tedious tasks and you start focusing on building that connection. And we all know, especially when we are the face of our business, relationships are key. I 100% believe that all five of these trends are pushing us to get back to connecting. Now, keep in mind though, these aren't going to be the only things that are going to be changing this year in the online world. I will always continue to keep you up to date, but these are the five ones that are really just standing out to me right now and five ones that you can start implementing immediately this year. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any point on social media. You can find me at Lisa Ann Coaching. I'm always here to help. And you know, I'm always cheering you on to crush those big goals within your business this year. I'll talk to you next week, my friend. Next week, I am going to go through some strategies to focus on this year from a marketing standpoint, okay? So enjoy your week. And again, happy new year. And I'll see you next week. Bye for now.